I believe, and I think you do too, that every person knows their blockages. Maybe not every one, because there is the subconscious programming that's there. But for the most part, because we've been doing this for such a long time, when you do a, sort of an intake session with somebody and you start asking them questions, uh, and you start recognizing the blockages and you get them to recognize those blockages and you're making a list of those blockages, they'll say, I knew that. Yeah. I've yeah. been suppressing that. Yeah. I've known that. And it's just now that I'm understanding how serious this is. Yes. Because blockages will mess with the metabolism like you can't even believe. Mm -hmm. Fear. Mm -hmm. uh, I hear people's metabolisms it either sounds like somebody threw on a, a, a train's brakes, which sort of hurts, yeah. hurts me a little. Uh, or other, other times, it's like a, there's a, a, a dull popping sound where the energy is not getting through. Yes. Um, so a lot of blockages have to do with how our body's chemistry is yeah. responding. The doctor's offices are filled with people with internal problems that are emotionally stemmed, that we have manic depression and, and regular depression uh, mm -hmm. rampant, and that's from rampant. being mm -hmm. on pathways that are not fulfilling our, our blessing, that are yeah. not putting us on the path that we are, are intended to be on. And we haven't found the courage yet or the help that we need in order to get on that path and to discover what that path might be. Our bodies react immediately sometimes, and it's killing us. It's killing us, not following what we were truly exactly. meant to be. Well, I'm going to do a little thing here with, uh, to, to move us into another part mm -hmm. of the subject, but I want to underline a few things. The definition in the dictionary for blockage is any obstruction of passage or progress, interruption or inhibition of a normal physiological signal as a nerve impulse. The base of emotional blockages is fear. At some point in the past, you stopped reading your body's signals and communications. Usually that can be as young as three mm -hmm. and four years mm -hmm. old. Um, a lot of people, it happens in preteens. But if you talk to, if you can calm yourself, clear yourself, ground yourself, and ask yourself, when did I stop listening to my body? Right. You know the answer. You'll know the incident that may have happened to you yes. that you stopped listening was, to your body. It was that voice of someone you respected or your voice of fear inside saying, no, 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 can't do that. Got to close down. Well, you know, Kathleen, I think it's about stopping listening to your own yes. heart. Yes, I agree What do completely. you want? Uh, what would make you happy? Uh, we give ourselves up to be loved by other people. Yes. And we don't ask those kinds of questions of the heart, and the answers are always 100% always there. Yes. Okay? The child, this is important. The child within does not seek answers or put things into perspective. I agree. It's primal. We agree. It's instinctive. The child within only knows what it has to do to feel safe, even at the expense of its own happiness. To survive, to survive, whatever it has to do to survive. And that's when I, when I mentioned reading your parents and being adaptable to yes. their mood, to their vibration yeah. in order to survive. And you're adapting in a way that is closing down the blessing of who you truly are. Yes, yes. So I would like to discuss with you now those are some little pointers. I mean, we could do a three-day workshop on yeah. the subject, but how would becoming realized in conscious living be experienced? And number one, you would have more sensory awareness. Explain sensory awareness. That is um, being attuned to your internal as well as external surroundings, the vibrations, the input you're getting. Um, we're all we all have an energy field, mm -hmm. and everything we think, do, and feel is in this energy field. And we have our feelers out there picking up extrasensory issues and feelings that give us information. Um, and we, we tune in to the ones that we're most comfortable with and we shut out the ones we're fearful of yes. and we block that out. And in we order, block the gift. We block the gift. 
And in order to um, receive more of the information, it's, it's a quieting of ourselves. It's a taking a look at what is deep within our spirit and allowing, giving ourselves permission for that spirit to come up and to feed off of that for a change instead of what's coming in from the right. outside. Um, I, I'm going to make a point on this particular statement. Mm -hmm. You meet yourself where you are right now. It's not about the past. It's not about the future. It's about right now. At any time in the now, you can ask yourself, do I love myself enough? How do I love myself more? You know, if we ever could get to the point where we could trust and not fear what's going to be said from that holy place within inside of us, then we would move very quickly into conscious living. Conscious living, the way I've designed this is to help people understand what it's like to live a conscious life. I'm not saying that I am totally conscious in living my life. It is a step-by-step -step process. But I do know that when something happens out of the ordinary, um, I can pick up the signal on it because I've trained myself. Today, you know, my birthday is tomorrow. Yes. And I Happy went birthday. out. Thank you. And I went out to um, the post uh, of the uh, mailbox and came back and found a silver ribbon sort of scrunched but at my front door and I want I, I immediately knew something was coming I didn't know what but something I was gonna like because it was silver was coming and I, I know that doesn't sound like much but you know it's like I look out my um, deck at night and there's I moved into a different house and there's the Big Dipper in the sky and there's something about the changes that take place in our life that are these little signatures. Mm -hmm. So I think that being present where you are helps you slow down because you can't be anywhere else. And there's where you can do the assessment. Mm -hmm. Very few of us take the time to slow down and be in the present. It takes a concerted mm -hmm. effort. We're so busy looking at our schedule for tomorrow and next week and this plan and that plan that we're racing forward. In fact, I used to have that problem with my premonitions. I would be getting them, I would be living for my premonitions and not paying attention to today because I knew this was going to happen tomorrow and this yeah. next week. I had to take a concerted effort to slow myself down, to look at my surroundings, to feel what was going on to live inside, your life. to live today. Yeah. So it does take concerted effort, uh, conscious effort to do that, but it's worth well, this it. This is a good point about slowing down because when you slow down, your personal time would be utilized different than mm -hmm. ever before because mm -hmm. you'd be thinking differently. Yeah. Uh, and you would be looking forward to time alone and communicating with spirit, meditation, visualization, and prayer, because those are the keys that develop a language between you and the God force. Yes, and in doing that, you're able to grab hold of who you are, take the wheel in your hands, yes. and start driving your own car instead of letting everybody else drive you, instead of letting everything else that's going on make your choices for you. You're able to understand who you are at the base and what it is that's going to meet your needs and have you glorify what it is you came to do and get you on that path. Well, you know, you could be in your vehicle and you can be driving down the road, but if you're not watching the signage, mm -hmm. you may have a curve coming yeah. and there's been a sign to warn you and you're going too fast to make it around that curve. So I always say to people, if you're going to get in the driver's seat, and I hope you do, that's a choice, then learn to read the signs along the road. Yes. Some say caution, some say stop, some say go. Some have this little arrow that shows that the road is going yes. to have the dips and yes. turns in it. 
So it, it, that's the way we can start living a more conscious life, is slowing yeah. down. And taking the baby steps to do it. You don't have to jump in at the deep end right away and then burn your toes and then run back because it didn't work out the first time. Take little baby steps at first. Work on opening up to spirit. Work on analyzing, I did this, this, and this before that didn't work out. Let's try this and this instead. Let's listen to the voice inside. Like I said, there's, there's no overstating the power of intent to take charge and right. to, to go forward in the direction you choose, that you came for, that your own individuality is going to celebrate. Well, also being in the now mm -hmm. gives you the opportunity to instantly know if you're grounded or not. Yes. I mean, how many people are driving their cars and not grounded? Yes. <laughs> Distracted. Yes. You know. I don't care where you are, if you're not grounded, things can happen. And especially, we have a full moon. Yes. Today, there's a yes, full moon. Yes, there is. And I'm noticing some crazy <laughs> drivers out there on the road. That's what they call they're lunatics. Not, they're yeah. not in their body yes. to be paying attention to do some of the things that yes. I'm seeing, uh, seeing them do. So when you're in the present, not only do you have the ability to ground yourself, but it clears the mind to be able to be receptive to this. Yes and to make the most of this moment. And take a look at the last week. How many times could you sit there and revel in the moments that you took and you, you looked at and you, you explored? There are not very many. And to take charge of being in the moment and explore where that is taking you and where that leaves you right now and how that makes you feel. Make a list. I do this, this. It makes me feel this, this and start analyzing what it is that's not letting you be in the now, that's not letting you take the path that you need to take, and start making adjustments, and being in the now, and being out there to receive the guidance, and to receive the knowledge of who you are, um, is, is step one in being able to take this path, mm -hmm. and be in the now, and enjoy now for what it is. Well, I noticed that in all the years that uh, I've been exercising my sensory system that I'm still, I still, there's a, still a level of surprise, there's still a level of, of the unexpected where uh, this whole thing that we're talking about was developed about four days ago at 11 o'clock at night in mm -hmm. front of a blank computer where I literally was just sort of being given the instructions. And I always giggle because I don't take that for granted. It's something that I just listen and go and do. And then it just unfolds. So it's like, you know, you bought a ticket to get on a Ferris wheel and you've never been on the Ferris wheel. Each experience is different. Yes. Nothing is the same. Yes. Nothing is really duplicated. So you might have had experience getting in front of your computer and, you know, did an inspirational writing. But the next writing you're going to do, it may be a completely different yes. experience. Yes. Many times we've come down to this particular life to expand our experiences to help our soul's progression, our soul's and yeah. our spirit's growth. So you're going to line up a whole battery of new experiences for you to go through. And you're going to miss them if you're skipping over them, rushing for next week instead of being in the now. You're going to miss the growth that you came to achieve. Kathleen, tell everybody where the knowing signal is. Well, inside your spirit, straight from your guide, straight to your God, um, way deep inside in the quiet recesses of your heart, of your mind, of your spirit, combined in well, well, let's, trust. Well, let's narrow it down for, that's a lot for them to remember. Okay. Let's narrow it down. There's two places. Okay. In the heart. Yes. And in the soul. Yes. Is where knowing is experienced. You know that you know that you know. Yes. And that and listening to that and learning listening to listen to that is absolutely key. So once uh, we establish this time alone with ourselves and we enjoy that and we're not afraid of that, yes. we don't avoid that. We yes. actually look forward to creating that yes. in our schedule. Okay, we look forward to experiencing the process of asking the body, the mind, and the spirit. There, it's different. Mm -hmm. It's a trinity. Yes. You know, asking the body a question is a little different than asking the spirit yes. a question. Yes. 